Imagine being sent to the most beautiful city in Belgium, only to be drowning in guilt over killing a child. Welcome to Bruges, where the stained glass and cobblestone can't cleanse a hitman's soul. You thought this was going to be a relaxing European getaway? <laughs> Think again. In Bruges is a dark comedy that punches you right in the gut, then asks if you want to laugh about it. Welcome to Specialist Cinema. I am Chandler, and here we go beyond the screen, diving into deeper meanings of movies that you and I both love. Let's break down the stories that stick with us one film at a time. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to keep videos like these coming every single week. Ray, an inexperienced hitman, messes up, and I mean messes up bad. He's sent to kill a priest, but things go horribly wrong when he accidentally shoots a young boy during confession. It's an act that haunts him, and now he's got more than blood on his hands. It's actually guilt. It's shame. It's the crushing weight of doing the one thing you can never ever come back from. Now, what does someone like Ray do when everything falls apart? Well, his boss, Harry, sends him and his mentor, Ken, to a quiet town in Bruges. It's a fairy tale fucking town, isn't it? How can a fairy tale town not be somebody's fucking thing? How can all those canals and bridges and cobble streets and those churches and all that beautiful fucking fairy tale stuff, how can that not be somebody's fucking thing, eh? To lay low and wait for further instructions. Bruges, an ancient, picturesque city that Ken finds absolutely magical. But Ray, he hates it. The canals and medieval buildings only remind him what he can't escape. We've all been there, trapped in a place that makes us confront our worst mistakes. For Ray, it's not the architecture, the unbearable silence. As they wander the city, Ray stumbles onto a bizarre film shoot featuring a dwarf actor. It's enough to momentarily distract him from his inner torment. He even meets Chloe, a local who moonlights as a drug dealer. They hit it off, and Ray thinks he might catch a break here. But life has other plans. At dinner, Ray's temper flares. He mistakes a Canadian couple for Americans and punches them out cold. Classic. Ever feel like you're just in one bad mood away from making the worst decision of your life? Yeah, that's Ray constantly. Later, Ray and Chloe are getting a little intimate, but her ex-boyfriend Eric shows up with a gun. Ray, not exactly thrilled by the uh, interruption, disarms him like it's no big deal and fires a blank in Eric's face, blinding him in one eye. Turns out Chloe and Eric rob tours for a living. Talk about an awkward date. Now, Ray pockets Eric's gun, grabs some drugs and real bullets and spirals further into chaos. No, I won't. I won't get out of your way. You'll Spending a wild night partying with Ken and the dwarf actor Jimmy. Meanwhile, Harry's patience runs extremely thin. Killing a child even by accident, that's something he just can't forgive. And just imagine for a second, if you live with the knowledge that you've done the unforgivable. Ray is spiraling here. Does he deserve a second chance? Give me a call. Harry doesn't think so. Harry orders Ken to kill Ray, and here's when things start get interesting. He's asking about if he loves the city and Ken makes him some lies. Ken, who's grown fond of Ray, follows his orders but hesitates when he finds Ray in the park moments away from taking his own life. Distraught by his guilt, Ray is ready to end it all. Ken steps in and stops him, choosing mercy over obedience. So when is mercy the right choice? Well, Ken disobeys a direct order to spare Ray's life because even in this twisted world, Redemption is worth the risk. It's a train that Ray just got on, and he's alive and he's well, and he doesn't know where he's going, and neither do I. So if you need to do your worst, do your worst. You've got the address of the hotel. I'll be here waiting. Ken sends Ray off with cash and a ticket out of Bruges, hoping his protege can escape the nightmare, get a second chance. But Harry, fucking furious. He hops on a plane, hellbent on taking care of business himself. No one disobeys Harry and gets away with it. Rules matter. You kill a kid, you die, no exceptions. Harry lives by that code and plans to enforce it personally. <laughs> Unfortunately, Ray's escape is uh, very short-lived. The police arrest him for assaulting the Canadians at that dinner before, and he's dragged back to Bruges. Chloe, thankfully for her, bails him out, but their reunion is cut short when Harry arrives. It's showdown time. Can you honestly outrun your past? Ray's back in Bruges and Harry's gunning for him. In the end, justice or at least revenge always finds you. Harry and Ken meet up for one last conversation where Ken tries to defend Ray, arguing that this kid deserves a chance at redemption. Harry though, he doesn't buy it. In a final act of defiance, Ken sacrifices himself, throwing his body off of the bell tower to warn Ray. Picture this, Ken is battered and bleeding, dragging himself to the top of the tower, throwing himself off to save Ray. It's not just the fall, it's the final act of loyalty. As Ray tries to escape, Harry catches up. They agree to take the fight away from civilians. Thank you, appreciate that. But when Ray drops his gun, Harry shoots him down in the middle of the film shoot. Here is where things go a little dark. One of Harry's bullets 
It's Jimmy. Yeah. <laughs> the little boy. That's right, Ray. The little boy. Who's dressed as a schoolboy. Harry, thinking he's killed a child, rightfully so, does what he promised to do if he ever crossed that line. Harry said he'd never live with killing a child. And he doesn't. He's a man of his word. Even though Ray tries to tell him it wasn't a real kid. Harry follows through and does himself in. This is a movie where even the darkest, most violent moments have moments of humor. It's a twisted world that kind of makes you laugh when you know you shouldn't. Ray is being carried into the ambulance. He reflects on hell, not the fire and brimstone kind, but the personal kind, an eternity in Bruges, where he is faced with his guilt for every second of every day. In the end, is there any real escape? Ray doesn't know if he'll survive, but he knows one thing's for sure. If hell is real, it's probably Bruges. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing and keeping videos like these coming weekly. Catch you in the next movie. Actually, in fact, I think you'd be interested in this one.